Let's revisit a sketch from last year. This is one of my favorite sketch. Uh, the guitarist uh, from October, from last October. I'm going to give you a real time commentary on this one. <laughs> If you find this video going uh, too slowly, what you can do is uh, speed it up by choosing a 1.25, 1.5 uh, playing speed on YouTube. YouTube allows you to choose the different speed so that you can uh, watch it in a faster speed or you can just jump ahead and uh, you know look at the overall sketch in a few minutes if that's what you want to do. As you can see, I normally uh, when I draw figures, I try to focus on the head uh, because, you know, having uh, drawn the overall shape and so on, focusing on the head is always a good idea. Uh, and uh, of course, everything is relative. So you want to make sure that the size of the hand is uh, relative, not to the head, but relative to the sketch. Uh, you know, because if the hand is not on the same plane, uh, being perpendicular to you, you will find that the hand is actually much bigger than the head. Uh, in this case, it is not. It's roughly about the same size, uh, even though hand should be smaller than the head. Uh, because the hand is nearer to you as a viewer, uh, obviously the hand is bigger uh, because of the uh, shortening, uh, foreshortening effect of, uh, uh, of drawing. I will have um, another video on the concept of foreshortening in the future. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Meanwhile, as you can see, I'm just uh, not trying to be too precise, capturing roughly the relative position of the shape, the very sh the various shape uh, in the sketch. Uh, you know, always observing back to uh, your original reference. In this case, the photograph that I have attached on the right hand side. Uh, as you can see, the sketch is not so simple, but yet it is not. Uh, too complicated either. So I think even for beginners, it should be uh, something that you can attempt. Uh, I will provide a link to the Pexels uh, website that you can download this uh, photograph or you can look at it on the website itself so that you can also make the same sketch if you like. Uh, that's uh, an exercise you can uh, certainly do uh, and uh, you know have a lovely couple of hours if you, if you want to do that. I'm not putting a lot of details on the face, uh, basically some indicative lines uh, where I probably want the shadows under, underneath the cap, that which is more most important. Uh, as you can see, I ignore the rest of the background and other lines that are not part of the main uh, you know, focus of the sketch. So as you can see, I'm uh, ready to paint. I start from the top. Uh, sometimes starting from the top is a good idea because um, what you're trying to do is to avoid having your palm uh, getting into the wet uh, area of the sketch. You start basically, you know, from uh, furthest away from your hand if you like. <laughs> That's it's also a simple, uh, you know, way of managing your watercolor sketch. Uh, since watercolor is wet and if you uh, touch it with your hand or palm, it will smudge uh, everywhere as you can imagine the color I'm using are uh, their mixture uh, the, for the hat it is a uh, lemon yellow with a bit of a uh, queen uh, rose and for the shirt is a queen ro roast with uh, maybe a depth uh, of um, uh, a bit of a uh, new gamboge one of the things that uh, you want to take care uh, when you use watercolor is that uh, try not to use simple color uh, in other words, just one color. Uh, try to charge in while it's wet, maybe another color. Or if you are planning to layer it, then uh, it doesn't matter as much. But if you don't intend to layer it, it's always useful not to keep uh, too simplistic a color. If you look around you, there is no uh, object with just a single color. There's always some shadows on it. There's always an impact on uh, you know uh, wear and tear on the subject. And you always find that the color is not just a single color. Uh, so, you know, learn to sort of mix and let the wa watercolor do its magic by sometimes accidentally overrun into different uh, shapes uh, or use water to dilute some part of it so that you create some kind of a soft edges as what I'm doing uh, right here. So part of um, in sketching, uh, you do want to uh, make sure that you create interest. 
As it is right now, you can see the sketch, it is actually pretty boring because it's just a couple colors and maybe an interesting blue shape at the bottom. Uh, but uh, by and large, the, the shape itself, even though they are organic and interesting, they are too boring because it is just one single color. We'll come back and put a couple more layers on it and uh, with a bit of shadows to make it pop, uh, to create form and three-dimensional uh, to the sketch, but it uh, should be uh, kind of, you know, in some ways uh, boring as it is at this point. Um, I'm also trying to put in a note which is uh, darkest, uh, you know, where the, uh, the shadow part of the uh, guitar it's not just a shadow part, it's also the darkest part of, it, of the uh, uh, guitar as you can see it is where uh, the darker uh, colors, uh, darker wood is being used to build that part of the guitar or oh, it could be colored by uh, the maker of the guitar, I don't know but uh, as you can see it is darker so I'm just trying to create that as well uh, there's also the, uh, the, the holes uh, where uh, the strings are being plugged uh, just trying to carefully weave around it uh, with uh, the shadow color if you like uh, those would be uh, quinacridon burn orange with a dash of queen gold uh, and uh, you can play around with that or even sometimes I like to mix in uh, catman, cadmium yellow or even lemon yellow part of the fun in uh, watercolor sketching is that you can sometimes uh, draw with your brush as I'm trying to do here but I really don't suggest uh, for beginners to draw too much with the brush especially with a small brush the idea is always to use uh, the biggest brush brush that you can uh, get away with and uh, so that you can cover more ground at the initial stage of the sketch and uh, you progressively move on to smaller brushes that's kind of like usually the technique uh, but sometimes you know uh, the itchy fingers uh, just can't help it uh, I grab the small brush and I start drawing with it and usually that's when I kind of messed up but in this case uh, you know I'm all I'm trying to do is just create a bit more of a, a dark tone, uh, put in the statement on the darker value. Uh, from a value perspective, from 1 to 5, this would be closer to 4, uh, using the uh, mixture of uh, burnt, queen burnt, queen acrodon, burnt orange, um, with a, maybe a dash of uh, uh, French ultramarine to make it slightly darker. Uh, and, uh, you know, just having the brush dance around, you know, uh, around where there are highlights or even where the metals, uh, where you tune your, or, you know, fix your uh, guitar string. Uh, I, I don't think you need to be very precise with it, but what you need to do is just make sure that there is somewhat a, an impression of uh, the reflection and highlights. And now I'm going into the body of the guitar, clearly uh, a higher mixture of queen gold. Uh, and less of a queen burn orange, although it is more of the same same mix if you like. Um, and uh, if you want to have a bit more of a uh, charged in color, feel free to drop in color like uh, lemon yellow or even new gamboche. That should give it a bit more of a variety uh, to the orange if you like. One of the key principles of uh, art or design is actually unity strive above all else some kind of a unity and i think one of the way you can create one of the ways you can create unity uh, is by using or leveraging uh, certain base colors uh, in this case it's basically the queen burnt orange um, and uh, because it is used to mix a few of the combination of colors there's some kind of a unity that runs through the sketch uh, that's also one of the idea you can use uh, to think about how you can create unified sketches uh, by not use, using jarring uh, colors that are completely separate without mixing them and uh, that therefore what you see then is uh, a painting that is uh, very difficult to unify uh, by the viewer uh, you will be seeing disparate colors and trying to make it work it's kind of hard when uh, you're not actually mixing it with a few of the base colors, uh, you know, in that sense. So now I'm just drawing uh, the various uh, crease and, cre uh, you know, the t-shirts folds, uh, and I'm just overlaying it with the same sort of dark, uh, again, queen burn orange with a dash of uh, queen rose, uh, and that should just give it a bit more of a three-dimensional sense. I'm softening some of the edges, uh, so that it's not so jarring and uh, even when you draw with your watercolor you're gonna make sure that the edges are not standing out too much it is actually blended into the background and there's no better way than just using a simple water wash uh, softening the line and melting it away 
so that it blends into uh, the other shapes underneath it. Again, I'm trying to differentiate uh, the shadows underneath the cap and uh, I'm just putting a bit more of a dark, uh, darkened shadow if you like, uh, ignoring the actual uh, underlying eyes and so on, but uh, just putting in uh, the values if you like uh, for representing the shadows underneath the cap. The same colors I'm using as well uh, to create a bit of a shadow behind the guitar uh, as well as the, the beard. I, I, I think sometimes I'm just being too lazy. I don't really want to use too many colors. Uh, you know, as you introduce too many colors, it might also create disharmony or disunity uh, in the sketch itself. So, you know, sometimes I'm just using the same color. I make sure that there's, if I put a patch here, I'm, I'm trying to repeat the same color in a patch elsewhere. Uh, in It's kind of like in a way a repeat or repeating uh, the colors but uh, it's also creating unity if you like for the skin tone colors I'm using a bit of um, Naples yellow uh, and uh, that is usually mixed with either new gamboge or queen rose uh, to provide the kind of red or uh, and so on uh, I'm, I'm trying to sculpt around the hand uh, so that it gives a bit of a three-dimensional form uh, as you can see from the photograph, there's some part which is a bit more intense and the other parts that's just lighter. So I'm just using water to kind of dilute it down. Uh, trying to give the impression of form by uh, gradating the shape, uh, if you like. So in the same ways, uh, sometimes I just put a bit more of a shadow first and then you know try to get uh, the values uh, correct from there and then use a very light wash to fill in the other part of uh, the flesh. Uh, in this case, fingers as you can see are in the light where else the base of the hand is actually in the shadow eventually I'll have to put a bit more uh, darker spots to create a three-dimensional separation if you like to uh, the hand all right the sketch is kind of forming uh, nicely now uh, there are somewhat uh, some edges or you know the shapes and so on are kind of you know coming out nicely uh, I'm still dropping in some separation uh, to create you know depth or form if you like you know in essence what you're trying to do is uh, sculpting a three-dimensional uh, subject out of a two-dimensional piece of paper and how do you do that well you separate uh, the planes by creating shadows by using shadows by gradating the uh, the colors the shape uh, by putting in light dark contrast in the same shape uh, so that your eyes can see somewhat of a three-dimensional sense uh, sometimes it's enough sometimes it's not so you have to observe and evaluate and be critical with your own uh, drawing and um, you know don't get too frustrated with your attempt because uh, you do need to do a lot of this to learn the very uh, the various um, uh, situation that requires a uh, different approach to it I find it very uh, very uh, relaxing and uh, very therapeutic to sort of just sculpt it, sculpt it. The danger, of course, is that you over sculpt it and you overdo it and you just kill the sketch. Uh, so you also need to be very careful not to overdo some of that. But at all steps, always take a look, uh, take a step back, evaluate the sketch, and see whether you like, um, you know, how how you like the sketch uh, formulating and uh, and whether it is going according to plan. Uh, and you know, if not, then it is a learning experience <laughs> if it's uh, going well then you know you should be happy with it and you're just gonna keep going uh, create a bit more three-dimensional sense here a bit more shadows there uh, using sort of uh, you know coaxing the, the sketch uh, to uh, become more and more uh, you know three-dimensional if you like uh, and uh, I, I always tell myself don't draw with a brush don't draw with a brush but there I go I'm, I'm drawing with a brush uh, and uh, it is what it is. Uh, it's old habit. Sometimes old bad habit dies hard. Uh, in in the head and in theory, you might know what you need to do, but uh, the hand just refused to uh, acknowledge and do it uh, as you wish. But that's life. Uh, get on with it. Enjoy it. And uh, it is a journey. And make sure you enjoy the journey as much uh, you know as you can, uh, and not get too frustrated. After all, uh, it should be fun uh, doing sketching and uh, especially watercolor I enjoy it tremendously as you can see I'm still going in to touch a bit more of the shadow and uh, a bit of lines to create a form uh, of making it a bit more three-dimensional a bit more darkening of some parts of the hand and uh, so on to make sure that uh, you know really uh, it pops if you like 
uh, giving you a better sense of uh, the structure of the person and uh, you know at all times because we have seen uh, you know the fee human figure so often every day in fact right as you wake up in the morning looking in the mirror you'll be seeing yourself you know you you actually understand how human figures uh, look like much better uh, subconsciously as well as consciously so you know even as you look at a sketch evaluate it with the same eye if you like uh, so that you can correct it if you are on the wrong track uh, to create a bit of sense of depth I use a broken shape behind uh, your eyes will see that blue line across as a single shape thereby pushing the you know the figure in front uh, and I'm gonna drop in a bit of a stronger colors in this case uh, you know the uh, quick uh, a bit of cadmium uh, orange and a bit of cadmium uh, um, colors will kind of pushed uh, against a very cool blue uh, shape that I have there uh, to break the, the the line if you like the slightly diagonal or slightly energetic line that is uh, rising upward uh, behind the figure I'm also doing a couple of vertical lines and splatter always splatter as much as you can get away with and uh, that makes it interesting and so on it's watercolor after all there's really no need to be so stressed so i think i'm gonna wait for the paint to dry and meanwhile just put down my name uh, and uh, you know evaluate it and uh, take a look at, to see what else i need to do uh, like i said this sketch was done in uh, 2020 october during october and uh, you know i really like this sketch i realized i didn't post it so you know i'm doing it, it sort of post-mortem if you like uh, now if you evaluate this and it's a bit drier uh, i'm going to go in now to create better separation between uh, the various shape uh, I, I want the cap to really pop so as you can see putting in a bit of a darker uh, shadows underneath the cap uh, and also go in to put in maybe the eye uh, and a bit more shadow underneath uh, the maybe a, a bit of uh, the lip the lips um, and uh, maybe a bit of uh, the ear or the earring if you like uh, and uh, yeah just just a bit of touches here and there very careful with a very very small zero zero brush smaller br smallest brush I can get in a shop and continue to draw a bit of a line here and there to create separation between the shapes and uh, to, to let your eye see uh, the uh, the various shape uh, you know in a much better light if you like uh, there's also the watch or something that he's wearing uh, and that is also something that uh, allows me to create interest uh, breaking the monotony of a single line shape and it creates a more interesting shape if you like so some of those tiny little touches uh, are very important because it allows you to see the shapes uh, better uh, it's also something that you can consider doing when you have broad shapes, broad wash uh, and you want to separate them and create a bit of uh, interest and so on. Uh, highlights or even shades uh, in the shadow, you can use the smallest uh, uh, you know, uh, brush to draw some of these lines. Uh, you can also indicate the plane if you like, uh, using the lines to you know, follow the, the planes and creating thereby an ability for for the audience to see how the shape actually uh, is uh, is being portrayed in the sketch. Uh, in this case, uh, I try to have you know, soft edges as well to some of the shape, uh, and I try to have fine lines to create uh, an understanding of how the planes or the shapes work uh, three dimensionally in the sketch. Well, we are almost done at this point, and uh, it is very important to know when to stop. I always find that it is very, you know, very, very difficult to stop. The hardest is to know, to know how to start. The second hardest is to know when and how to stop. So as I evaluate and I'm drawing more lines, I'm, you know, I'm just enjoying myself and so on. There's always a tendency to go overboard and to kill the sketch with too much uh, detail and too much stuff uh, as well. So you know, I'm always being very careful at this stage to tell myself stop 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 <laughs> doesn't always happen uh, and you just keep going keep going keep going and eventually you keep going till the sketch is uh, terrible and it doesn't work anymore <laughs> so it's always very important to uh, be self-critical and be uh, always evaluate take a step back take a breather get some tea uh, brew the water and you know boil the water and brew some tea and 
you know, and then uh, wait for the paint to dry and learn to be patient, take a look at it and, uh, you know, just see what works, what doesn't. If it doesn't work, maybe you need more lines. If it, uh, if it works, just stay away from touching it and, uh, you know, getting too itchy with uh, <laughs> too much detail. It will just kill the sketch. So be very careful with that. Like I said, going slower and slower with my sketch uh, at all time, just evaluating it. As you can see, I'm already overdoing some parts and I think some of those tiny little lines in the finger are actually not necessary. There's just way too much detail even at that point. I think it could have been uh, better off if I've left it alone. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, I'm showing you all my approach, <laughs> good or bad, it doesn't really matter. So a bit more of a shadow underneath the nose to make sure the nose is readable. I think that one is okay. Uh, separate the face from the back uh, and separate maybe a bit more of the ear to make sure that it is visible with a bit of a, you know, um, and so on. So as you can see, I think it is really very close. So let's stop here and uh, thank you very much for uh, following me on the YouTube. I enjoy, I hope you enjoy this sketch. Peace wherever you are. Bye. Yeah.